Hi, everybody. It's Jay, and I am back in the booth with you for another sneak peek video preview for this week's new release here on Say With Jay. This week, our new release is part two of There I Find Family. There I Find Family is a special novella that Jesse Gusman has written as a way to wrap up the Strawberry Sands Beach sweet romance series in a big, beautiful bow. And I've got more about the story and a few minutes of part two for you in just a bit. But first, I wanted to share with you something really, really special. In fact, it's kind of unique because I can't remember really ever doing two previews in a single video. But we've got just that for you here today. Now, as I just mentioned, the Strawberry Sands Beach Sweet Romance series has ended, and we're now going back to one of our favorite places on Earth, Sweetwater, North Dakota. Jesse's got a new Sweetwater series launching on January the 19th, Sweet View Ranch, Western Sweet Romances, and the first book, A Cowboy's Forever Faithful, is again launching on January the 19th. For fans of these previous series, our hero and heroine are not going to be strangers to you. A Cowboy's Forever Faithful is the story of Travis Feigley and Ellen O'Reilly. Yes, Travis and Ellen finally get their own story. Now, to celebrate the launch of this new series and A Cowboy's Forever Faithful, we've got something special for you. An extended preview, an hour-long, four chapters, and that video is available today. You can find that video in three different ways. First, there's a link to it in the description of this video down below. You can find a link in Jesse's newsletter, which hopefully you're subscribed to, but if you're not subscribed, you can subscribe at jessegussman.com for free. And thirdly, if you go to the Say With Jay YouTube channel and look under Playlists, look for Jay's Daily Audiobook Production Playlist. That's where, for channel members, I post the chapters I record each day, and that preview is available there. It has its own unique thumbnail, so it'll be easy to spot. But also, for what it's worth, if you like the idea of being able to listen to an audiobook as it's being recorded, this is a perk that really might interest you, and you might want to consider joining our channel. You can find out more about joining our channel by hitting that Join button down below, or if you don't have a Join button on your screen, you can, in your internet web browser, go to youtube.com slash saywithj slash join to find out more. However you find this preview, we do hope you'll enjoy it and then come back to listen to the full release on audiobook and ebook on January the 19th. But let's talk a little bit about this week's new release. There I Find Family is a story that Jesse wanted to tell before we left Strawberry Sands, and I think we all wanted to hear, and that's the story of Lana Landry. Lana is the matriarch of the Landry family, and over the course of this series, she's watched her six children find their true loves, and marry and start their lives together. And Lana is kind of wondering what she's going to do with the rest of her life. While she's happy, she feels like she could be doing more. Now, around about book eight in the series, I think, Lana met a man named Pierce Piance. Pierce is the son of Joe, the elderly man who lived in the lighthouse up the beach towards Raspberry Ridge that Lana was visiting. And one day when she first meets Pierce, kind of out of character for Lana, 
she kind of gets in his business and challenges him to do more with his life. You see, Pierce is a very successful businessman in Chicago, and Lana urges him to live for more than himself. Little does she know, Pierce takes her words to heart, and he becomes a foster parent to three young siblings. We meet them in the final book of the series. And now, as our story opens here, Lana's feeling a little bit convicted because while she challenged Pierce to do something more with his life, and he did, she's been thinking of ways she could be more of a blessing to others, but she hasn't acted yet. So she feels led to try to help Pierce somehow with these three kids. Pierce, on the other hand, also is feeling very strongly towards these children and wants to be more than just a foster parent. He's considering adopting them, but he feels very strongly that a family ought to have a dad and a mom. And he actually harbors feelings for Lana as well. Can these two come together and find a way to bless these kids and make their lives better and then possibly find more for themselves? Well, you are going to have to come back this Friday to find out the full story. But for now, here are a few minutes to episode two. I hope you guys enjoy it and then come back for part two this Friday here on Say With Jay. Pierce held his breath. This was not the way he had intended to ask Lana to marry him. It wasn't the way he had intended to tell her what he had planned either. But it was the way it came out. He could hardly go back and do it over, so he held his breath and waited. Mary, she said. Her voice sounded a little faint. Her hand went to her throat, then fingered the neck of the collar of her shirt absentmindedly, like she didn't really know what she was doing with her fingers, just needed to move a little. <laughs> Crazy, isn't it? You can just ignore me. But he didn't want her to. He wanted her to see him, to see the vision he had, to know that he wanted someone to walk beside him and he thought that she was perfect for the job. Not job, position, that he wanted to walk beside her, to support her, to create something with her together. That he thought that they would make a good team, that they would not only be able to parent the children that were playing outside at that very moment, but that they would be able to support each other for the rest of their lives however long that was. No, that's not crazy. I suggested being a nanny, and I assume that if I didn't get up early every morning and drive here, staying until late every night, I would live here. But marriage, that makes more sense. The children would have a mom and a dad. Yeah, you know I wanted that but it's not just about the kids. Her eyes shot back to his and she blinked as though his words had completely changed what she was thinking. It's not? No, I, I guess maybe I can't declare undying love for you. I'm not sure what that looks like, but I can say that the idea of walking beside you, of creating something together, of raising these children together. I can't think of anyone else I'd rather do this with. Really? You must know a lot of women, a lot more talented and successful women than me. Talent and success doesn't really matter much when we're looking at things eternal. But I'm, I'm just a mom who runs a bed and breakfast. You ran a farm with your children after your husband left you, and you've been successful, not just running the farm and the bed and breakfast, but in raising your children. He shook his head. 
But none of that matters. I mean, it does, but not really. It's your character that I'm looking at. The corners of her lips tilted up a little, as though she were looking at character as well. From where he stood, it looked like she had a lot more character than he did. But she nodded knowingly. That would be the reason that I would say yes, because you are a man of your word, and I feel like I can trust you because you've always done what you said you were going to do, and I have to admire someone who's willing to put what could be the easiest years of their life aside and choose to give those years to three children who need a family. I think you might be giving me more credit than I deserve. If it hadn't been for you suggesting it, I wouldn't be doing it now. So, if you're going to find someone to admire, you could admire the person in the mirror. But I only said it. You're the one who did it. I didn't go try to foster anyone. <laughs> That's because you were waiting for me. He couldn't keep from smiling a little, and maybe teasing her a bit, because he didn't think she was doing any such thing. But she didn't smile back. If possible, she looked more thoughtful. Maybe. You know, not on purpose, but because that was just the way the Lord worked it out. I wasn't expecting it, but I almost went and began the training that I would need to do to become a foster parent. I just didn't. Not over the winter. I see. So... Maybe the Lord was working things out and this was meant to be? He wasn't sure how he felt about that. He wanted her to do the Lord's will, of course, but he didn't want this to just be about the Lord's will. There was a part of him, maybe it was a prideful part, that wanted her to choose him because, because of something else, something more elusive, something like admiration, love. Maybe he was more romantic than he thought he was, because he didn't want her to be with him because of duty. But that seemed to be what they were heading toward, a marriage of duty. That wasn't what he intended. But he wasn't sure how to go back and change things now. I, I've been feeling for a while that God was pulling me towards you, but this was not what I was expecting. Lana bit her lip and looked at him. Do you mind if I take a few days to think about this? Hi, this is Jay, and thanks for listening. If you're ready for another great audiobook, here's one we think you might like. Or check out the playlist with all our latest releases. Don't forget to subscribe to Say With Jay, give this video a thumbs up, and tell us what you liked in the comments.